Hi everyone, uh, Alexi here. I'm editing the episode afterwards. Uh, this one is a bit rough. Kara's audio got unfortunately misrecorded with the wrong mic. I've done my best to make it into something listenable, but I hope that you'll still have a good episode. Um, this one is a fun one. Enjoy. Hello and welcome to The Last Standee, a board game podcast coming to you from five... That's wrong, I shouldn't read to <laughs> <laughs> Let's make that three uh, existing countries across Europe. So I am joined here today by Alessio. <laughs> who is ha having trouble finding the push to talk key. No, you hello, me, hello, you hello. Me with the existing countries. <laughs> <laughs> they are all existing. <laughs> Um, yeah, so Alessio, uh, Audrey. Hi. And hello, I'm, hello, hello. <laughs> and I am your host, Kara. We'll be talking about um, two uh, interesting games I have never heard anything about before today and uh, start with a general discussion about the whole crowdfunding topic but before we get to that let's do a standy roundup so audrey what have you been up to uh, I'm, I'm going to pass on that question no i'm not going, i'm not going to pass but i definitely this recording is going so well now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah complete chaos yeah i mean i mean uh, when i play uh, the, the video game guild wars 2 on the tuesday with my friends um, we have called ourselves the Chaos Static. Static is a group of friends playing uh, video games at the same time. Um, we definitely encounter Chaos uh, pretty often, so we have named ourselves the Chaos Static. So let's say that I am in my element there. <laughs> um, yeah, ba back to the question at hand. Yeah, I'm, I'm very deep in work these days. It's really lots and lots and lots of stuff to do. So I'm definitely busy. Um, for a little bit of a board game uh, stuff with my husband, we have been trying to push our Iron um, Trespass Odyssey campaign, uh, which uh, I think I forgot to share that on the Discord, but anyway, that happens. So we got to the point where you actually gain access to the next campaign if you want to, without finishing uh, the current one, the so cycle one. We, we have the access to the, let's say, fresh start uh, for cycle two, so we were pretty exciting to see that there is this uh, fresh start setting, uh, call it however you want, but we were very, yeah, very excited and happy to see that. And uh, yesterday, as of date of this recording, we tried uh, Villainous Marvel. I no. I lost uh, horribly uh, playing with Testmaster against uh, Hela. I wanted to play Hela actually, and my and I let my husband first pick. Uh, I shouldn't have apparently. Um, so yeah, we will see how things go in another game another time. But for now, yeah, I definitely stand at a. A huge loss. Um, yeah, so while I was busy doing metallurgy stuff at work, Alessio, what have you been up to? Hopefully in the gaming side? Hello! Hello! Oh. No, okay, I I'm just doing chaos. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, oh, uh, gaming, I actually have been, uh, since it's been a lot since we last talked, uh, I actually... Uh, was finally joined since COVID by my old gaming group from my university, from my college uh, city of Pisa in Italy. So uh, we played a lot. We uh, it actually, it happened at the, the weirdest thing, which was uh, the first game we played was actually uh, uh, Challengers with a beach party and the regular Challenger mixed together. Uh, and was suggested by my nine-year-old kid who hanged out with us who are basically six, uh, six 40 year old uh, men from uh, across all Italy for the entire weekend so it was weird 
I think I'm corrupting that kid. Well, I have another, so no problem. Oh. And <laughs> That's why I have multiple kids. So yeah, when you screw up with the first the one, one, you can learn from yeah. your mistakes. Yeah, of course. It's not like no pressure. So something like that. And uh, besides that, uh, there has been this big... Um, I'm not timestamping, but I think uh, we are getting the chance of saying something about right when uh, the thing happens. So uh, I think I want to circle around this. There has been a big, big, big Kingdom Death update. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I want to... Uh, I know that Fen will... will uh, just want to chime in, so we will save the big discussion for yeah. everything else. But I, I just want to say one thing. Uh, I want to say this to you, Bigfooty, from uh, the Lantern's Rain Discord. Did you see that the Mirror Stone is actually a big mirror in the campaign People of the Mirror Stone? Because, yeah, basically, I loved the narcissistic uh, narcissistic survivors who are basically the people who <laughs> looks at themselves in the mirror all the time. It's beautiful. And I, and I, and and I love that the Inti Messi couple are now, are now called Inti and Messi. I love that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Everyone loves it. But, that. yeah, it's beautiful. It's, uh, it's a, it was actually a pretty good update. Also, because the content was uh, genuinely funny and uh, enticing to play. So... That's all I wanted to say about this. Uh, and that's basically it. What about you, Kara? Well, uh, my attention span didn't last long enough to read the whole update. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so the parts I read were good, um, apart from the $45 philosophy packs. Each, each. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, okay. Um yeah, anyway, so um, I have been more proactive in getting my uh, board game group together um, as part of mental health exercises because, you know, meeting people and doing fun stuff is good for your mental health, uh, generally. So, um, Hello! <laughs> hi, what, what? What's happening? It's good for your mental health. Yeah, and... Um, yeah, we, uh, I also took this as an opportunity to try to, to reduce my pile of opportunity a little. And, um, a while ago, we, uh, talked about, uh, Detective City of Angels. And, um, as, as previously mentioned, I have not the best experiences with detective games, but the talk about this game kind of convinced me and then I bought it. Um, I can't remember when we talked about it. Uh, feel free to check when it was. Um, around that time, I bought the game. This Monday, we finally got to play it. And um, yeah, it was actually kind of fun. So um, Kara found a detective game that she likes. Um, <clears throat> so it, it, I was really afraid that I wouldn't like it and that it had just sat here for, for months or years and uh, then I would have have found out that I actually didn't like it, but yeah, I like it. So it um, was episode eighteen, and we are now at uh, seventy six, I guess. But we will know when it's out. Yeah, yeah. So, so not too long ago. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, apart from that, um, my house renovations are done. And I'm really looking forward to going there next weekend and just being able to, you know, clean it and set stuff up and not having any workers walk through and spread materials and, and tools uh, anymore. And so, who doesn't um, look forward to, to cleaning? I mean, yeah, of generally I don't, but in this case, I'm actually <laughs> really excited. <laughs> Because Scra the... Scrape paint from the walls, from the floor, <laughs> from everywhere. <laughs> because the last time I went to my house, um, I did clean it, only to have uh, workers come into the house two or three days later and be there for four weeks. And so I kind of felt stupid. 
and the, and the um, workers and the workers felt so grateful that you basically cleaned the house for them. Yeah, I, I'm I'm not so, sure they noticed. A, a nice thing always pays for itself. Yeah, maybe I collected some karma points for the afterlife. Um, anyway, so I am looking forward to that, and I have decided um, to start a, a queer uh, club at school. Um, I'll see how it goes next week when the first meeting is, if anyone shows up or if I just sit there alone. And, um, no, I, <clears throat> come on, I, positive. I just hope you don't stress or strain yourself too much about that. Yeah, yeah actually, um, the, the, I, the, I noticed um, that school is really stressful and somewhat horrible for me right now, but... Um, yeah, there have been some religious debates with sixth graders and uh, who told me I will burn in hell after I die and, you know, the usual stuff I mean, that happens least, in biology class. At least you won't be cold. Yes. Yeah. And come on, everyone will burn in hell. So, <laughs> no worries. No pressure. Um, but I noticed that the interactions with uh, the queer students at my school are really something that I enjoy and I'm looking forward to. So uh, I decided, hey, I should make a club and I have no idea what we'll do. Maybe we just sit around 45 minutes, drink tea and talk and then it would be great for everyone, I think. Or maybe someone has a great idea what we could as, do as activity or whatever. So I'll just see if anyone comes and if someone comes, I'll go from there. So no pressure. That'd but um, Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> so, um, Yuko is well, and... You are the host, come on! It's your topic. Okay, yeah, my talk. Uh, yeah. My, my talk. <laughs> so, um, anyway, that's it for the catch-up. Let's uh, jump into our first uh, big topic, crowdfunding. Um, <clears throat> so, um, I suppose... All three of us are doing crowdfunding projects from time to time, occasionally. Yes. What is crowdfunding? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh so yeah, for anyone on. who has no idea what crowdfunding is, basically someone has a great idea or not so great idea. Someone has some kind of idea um, <laughs> and they go on the internet and say, hey, strangers on the internet, I have a great idea for which I need money. Do you want to give me money so I can put my idea into reality? And uh, that's crowdfunding. In due time, yes. yes. Yeah. And uh, to entice people to actually give you money, usually you promise them something in return, like, hey, this idea produces, for example, a game. So when you give me money, once my game is finished, I will give you the game. Yeah. For example. So, um, <clears throat> and it turns and out that the money they ask you is roughly the same as the game cost. -ish. Yeah, that's actually already an interesting part um, because I, um, when we talked about, hey, what could be a topic for this recording, I was or I am still at this time, I'm thinking a lot about crowdfunding and which products I, projects I supported and which I maybe want to support and um, <clears throat> so I thought, hey, that might be interesting to learn what people here support and uh, why they support it and what they look forward to, maybe. And um, in all these uh, thinking things, I'm missing some English word here, but um, there's actually this price perspective. Because in the past, when, when I started with crowdfunding projects, which was actually with Kingdom Death Monster. It was my first Kickstarter project. Um, 1.5, <clears throat> right? Yes, 1.5. Um, um, in the beginning, I had this experience that actually crowd Kickstarter was cheaper than retail. Yeah? At, at this point, it was really like, okay, if you back it early, you'll get it cheaper because once it hit retail, it will be much more expensive. And that has ch changed. And 
it's not just that by now the projects usually cost as much to support as they will be in retail, but at least for Europeans, it's often the other way around, that when you crowdfund, it can get more expensive. Um, ah, which leads me notice. to... <laughs> huh? Did you notice? Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, I did notice. <laughs> and I did notice it with um, one of the last five kicks uh, crowdfunding projects I backed. Um, a, a few episodes ago, we talked about Keep the Heroes Out. I think it was you or Lesio, wasn't it? Yeah, I love yeah. it. And yeah. uh, you convinced me that I should look more into it. And I looked more into it. And then there was uh, a, a few weeks ago the uh, expansion Kickstarter. Um, and so I said, oh, yeah, that's that's the ideal situ uh, time to, you know, jump in. And I looked at the price and I saw that I it's fucking out. expensive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that and then I noticed, okay, the German version is in retail for 55 euros. The Kickstarter with the English version, which doesn't matter because the, the, the game itself is completely language independent and you can get the rule book as PDF in any language. Yes. Um, the English version is $60 plus shipping plus, plus. taxes. Back. Yeah. <laughs> so I calculated and found out, okay, if I'm supporting it on Kickstarter, I'm paying 30 euros more than I, when I buy it in retail, which is yeah. crazy, <laughs> right? <laughs> no, uh, actually, the, the price is uh, completely getting out of end. Uh, I don't know if you want to talk about the Kickstarter, the project, actually, but uh, uh, when I talked about Keep the Heroes Out, uh, I still stand by the opinion that the game is a magnificent game, a very fun game for all the family, so very beautiful. And also the boss fight expansions is not, not so much the boss fights, but the rookie heroes are a great addition, so it would be very interesting. But... I really think that the standalone base game is already a good uh, game as it is. And also, it is really not convenient to take it from Kickstarter. Yeah. <laughs> it just... I, I Do you see... Uh, you should see it like a pre-order pre bonus at this point. Like, okay, I'll get this exclusive. I'll be sure that it won't be sold out by the time it gets to retail. And But I'm paying in advance and I'm paying uh, possibly a bit more. So that's it. But it's not actually an ad advantageous to you as a buyer. Well, it's not a discount. I mean, you, 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 pff, oh, I'm going to be able to talk. European Union has ruled out that anyway. Uh, crowdfunding <laughs> is a pre-order, so hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, what, that's true. With, with this Kickstarter, what I did in the end was exactly what you just said because they had these uh, two Kickstarter exclusive expansions: one the Cthulhu themed one. And then the uh, rainbow unicorn one that drops rainbow poop in the dungeon. Um, <laughs> and basically they had this, uh, the, the pledges were like, hey, if you get this new expansion, you get the rainbow unicorn poop throwing monster um, for and free. And that's how they got you in. Yeah. yeah. And so I decided, okay, you know what? This kicks out through the expansions price at like 15 or $20. So... If I get this for free, it kind of offsets the shipping and taxes for the expansion. So, okay, so I order just the expansion and sometime between now and when it fulfills, I will just buy the German core game in a, a regular <laughs> retail. That's um, smart, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so I get a Kickstarter exclusive thing and uh, that interests me. I'm, I'm not really interested in the whole Cthulhu thing. I'm sorry. So, Neither uh, would but I... I'm, yeah, but I'm interested in, in the in the rainbow poop, pooping unicorn. So um, yeah, we wouldn't. <laughs> Me, <clears throat> for instance. Yeah. And um, yeah, so another Kickstarter. Um, I, I just I'm, I'm telling you now what the last five crowdfunding projects, ga board game related, are, and then we, we can go from there. So I have this keep the years out uh, sure. expansion stuff. Then Game Toppers 4.0, uh, 
um, for those who don't know, Game Toppers, um, they yeah. um, are kind of a, a modular, low-budget gaming table thingy. So they have this rail system that you put together and can put on top of your regular dining table, and then you have like a gaming table. Um, you can also buy legs for these, so you have an actual game t- gaming table. Um, <laughs> and it's the fourth iteration of the Kickstarter. Uh, I already have a gaming table, so I'm not interested in that, but they also produce really great gaming mats for inside the gaming table. And in their second Kickstarter, I got uh, a gaming mat designed by Ryan Lockett. And um, so now I have that one, like fantasy themed a little and uh, plain blue one. And I decided I would really love to to have more variety, especially like I want a, a space themed one for like Star Wars Armada or something. And um, maybe another one. So I have four um, I can switch out from a gaming table. So that's why I backed this one. Um, then Beast. Um, yeah. I don't think we talked about Beast on the podcast. No, no. I, that's a uh, fun fact. There's one of our Patreons from Italy, Dario. Hi, Dario. Uh, who actually uh, bought that game. Uh, we had long talks uh, about it because I basically muled that game for him. So uh, I know a bit about Beast, but I won't talk about it but it's kind of nice so it's okay i don't know anything about expansion so you are informed about this <laughs> yeah i mean i i haven't played it yet obviously and um well not obviously but i haven't played it yet and um but it looks really interesting it's um quick it's a uh, one versus many with hidden movement for the one um Interestingly, whenever people compare it to other games, they never say the one game I actually know that does this, Scotland Yard. Um, so yeah, when I mind management is better. I haven't played this either. So I have played Scotland Yard. When I see such a game, yeah. I think Scotland Yard, <laughs> but much cooler in a fantasy world. And one is a monster that eats villagers and sheep, and so and the others are hunters. So... It's, it sounds really interesting, fun. Shut up and sit down. Uh, did videos about it and um, highly recommended yeah. it. So, yeah. Um, so, I back that one. Uh, Stars of Akarios uh, 1.5, um, the, yep. the reprint uh, new expansion Kickstarter. Um, when the first uh, game found project, I'm sorry. Um, when the first one uh, hit, I fought long and hard about whether I want to support it and in the end for some reason I decided ah, I won't do it I, I think at this point I was like ah, I shouldn't spend too much money on board games um, since that ship has sailed a couple thousand euros ago um, <laughs> <laughs> now I can just say ah, it's, it looks interesting and I, we had this discussion on our discord you should join our discord by the way um, <clears throat> yeah, how come many, on, talk. how many space themed board games one should have, and so the decision was is, made is that I should have. About space board games? No, it's about everything that's interested in life and the world, and it's about time board games. No, what? it was about the space and time board games, but now that you make it, me explain uh, this, yeah, it's not yeah. so funny. I'm sorry. So, I'm no. sorry. No, no, I'm no, sorry. I, I am sorry. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I won't excuse you. Ah, it pains me. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I, uh, I, before I dis- finally decided to back it, I actually tried out the tabletop simulator mod, which is very clunky and buggy and, um, not well done, but it gave me yeah, a feel I got of reviews. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of, uh, I mean, I, I, I couldn't do it better, just to be clear. But um, <laughs> I've seen many times of simulator mods, and most of them at least get it right to, you know, um, cut the card artwork right. So it's yeah, it's it's just it's just weird. But um, it gave me a feel for the game, and it was really fun. So yeah, I I backed it, and uh, and then a game I 
wasn't aware of might exist. And uh, when I decided to back Beast and Stars of Akaris, I just stumbled upon it on GameFound is Acheron's Fall. A, um, oh, I don't know that one. Yeah, uh, I don't think many people know that one. But what more people might know is um, Infinity, the tabletop skirmish game. Um, I think David talked about it on the podcast uh, once upon a time. And once upon a time. Who's David? Uh, I don't know. That, uh, some, does some... he do crowdfunding? <laughs> I actually don't know if, <laughs> if, whether David did or does crowdfunding. He, he did, Hi, he, David. He did pledge for KGM uh, and is yes. getting out of it, but he at some point... Did get it. Yeah, at some point he did crowdfunding. So, um, but anyway, he talked about Infinity and it's, he really liked it. I tried on tabletop and I wasn't too excited for it. But, uh, Acheron's Fall is basically Infinity in space with, you know, spaceships and stuff. Um, <clears throat> in the world of Infinity where humans fight aliens and, um, they, um, yeah, they try to start this as a new tabletop game. And the interesting thing about it, and why I was immediately hooked, they do have inertia in the game. Oh, physics. Yes. I mean, Star Wars Armada... So seductive. <laughs> yeah, Star Wars Armada has a little bit of inertia with, you know, the big ships can't, you know, just stop and... Uh, change speed however they like and whatnot. They, they feel Turn very slow and clunky. Yeah. <laughs> but Acheron's Fall is actually, you have this tablet where you mark the current inertia of your ship and when you use energy to change course, you move this pip and so the faster you are, the harder it is to change course and it's, and it can lead to your ship actually moving sideways because you rotated your ship, but you haven't changed inertia yet. So your ship moves sideways. And so it's, it's, it's really, yeah, I was hooked and I, I got into <laughs> it and I, I thought, Hey, 85 euros. That's a low entry point. You get eight ships. Um, that's affordable. So of course I pledged for 185 euros and plan to get all the add ons. Uh, remember, remember these words. Uh, you will be reviewing this. Yes. Yeah, this is a, a <laughs> spaceship battle game where you cannot steer the spaceship properly, <laughs> so <laughs> you just crash around. <laughs> you will love this review. <laughs> <laughs> so that's uh, the last five uh, board game related crowdfunding projects. Actually, the last five anything related crowdfunding projects I supported. Uh, with a short why I did it. Um, so what about you? What's the last thing things you supported? Why did you support them? Um, uh, I supported uh, in one, with one euro the Georgian Paint Forge uh, Orcs of Inif. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing it properly. A miniature Kickstarter. It, it's definitely just miniatures, like for for painting and stuff. Um, I I was in there just for the pets uh, because uh, there are lots of cats. Uh, like you have stretching cat, you have sleeping cat, you have cat in a box, you have cat on a box. Uh, <laughs> and I was waiting for a pets only um, pledge bundle. Um, it was like le teased and did not end up happening. So when the pledge manager releases, I'm probably going to piece uh, a few of them. But that's going to be something like under 50 euros total anyway. Not a big one, and I think my big one before that was actually the Aeon Trespass um, Heracles uh, Sins. 12 Sins. Sins of Heracles. Oh. Yeah. 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 That was the other oh one before. God. And <laughs> honestly, I, I haven't done many more crowdfundings uh, this year. Um, maybe one, the old one that I don't actually remember, I think Tainted Grey Kings of Ruin was in the previous year, I think, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but, I mean, I, I started getting into makeup uh, in 2023, and I couldn't just uh, <laughs> afford both in parallel, so at some point I had to pick, and very, there are no makeup crowdfunding, or close to none. 
so I mean, yeah, I barely like looked at Kickstarter and stuff, but I do think actually it's for the best. Let's not just count <laughs> how, how many eyeshadow palettes I have instead, please. Mm. Okay, <laughs> let's end this in a, on a yes. positive note. Yeah, <laughs> makeup is is uh, enragingly expensive. Yeah, it's miniature painting for faces. Yeah, but mm. I mean, there, there is one good thing: is that if you pay like fifty euros a board game, it takes so much more space than a fifty euros eyeshadow palette. So there, there that's is true. <laughs> that's true. That's a consideration to take space. So makeup is definitely more space efficient than board games. Exactly, exactly. So anyone of our listeners who's worried about space, maybe switch from board games to makeup. <laughs> and do, do, do makeup have inertia? Um, yes, if you throw if makeup, you, it does have, have physical. inertia. <laughs> if you add the proper primer before you put it on, yes, it does stay on. So I, I, I guess that can count as inertia. <laughs> I guess. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure if if you spin around your your own axis fast enough, it <laughs> might fly off. Wow, th this is the most interesting episode I ever participated in. <laughs> and, and, and you, Alice, you have you been into crowdfunding makeup or just board games or just crowdfunding or makeup without oh. crowdfunding? Anything? <laughs> okay, uh, I I just want to say hi to David. Hi, David. <laughs> <laughs> I'm embracing chaos. So, uh, well, yes. Uh, yes, I yes, to which a, one? Yeah, a, a few projects. Uh, I think the most interesting in the last time. Actually, there are two. But the most interesting starter, I think, is the old King's Crown, which is basically... Uh, this is... A very beautiful game you can find it on kickstarter just go on the project page i will wait uh there's basically this beautiful illustrated game uh, which is kind of a battle line uh, so it if we remember a bit of shot and tot and rift force battle line and these kind of games but instead of going simple like these ones when you go for a fast game you strategize on tactics and short-term turns. You basically create uh, a sprawling narrative. And since the illustrations were beautiful, the game was interesting. I love battle line games. And this one looks like something very different. I just say, oh, to the hell, I will just pledge it. And it's 52 pounds which is a bit more in euros. <laughs> so <laughs> it's actually, it, it was my crazy expense for the, for the uh, Christmas season. But uh, this is the most interesting one. There is another one, which is actually pretty cool. This, this, this other one is on Game Found. It's now available for late pledge, so you can have a look. It had barely funded basically it's chaos cove by martin wallace and this is weird because martin wallace designed brass which is the top game right now <laughs> and among the most played around the world so uh, it's a another cool game because it's a worker placement game where you basically place worker you have to defend from pirates you have to defend from uh I don't remember but from something else, but you have four heroes which you move around. So the four workers heroes who, ma who make actions for you on the board this round will go to your opponent to the next round and they will turn around so everyone will play with everything. And this is actually pretty innovative. I have faith in Martin Wallace, although this game was barely aired, barely funded. Uh, so that's basically it. Basically, it, I also pledged for the expansion of uh, uh, Keep the Heroes Out, like Kara, uh, but I back it out, and I will late pledge it later, because of, ex of the cost, basically, because I, I love the project. And, uh, like I said, Keep the Heroes Out uh, is, uh, uh, is a very fun game, which can be hard at times. There is the Rookie, 
hero, uh, which is your opponent, which is basically a bit of respite and helps you play with kids. And so that's what convinced me to pledge. The bosses of the boss expansion are also very cool because they start as enemies, but if you fight them, they will give you power ups and will play with you. And that's basically it. From a, a, a bit of more time ago, I think six months ago or so, I pledged also for Wizards and Co, which is a game from Sinister Fish Games, the ones uh, from Villagers, Moon, and the Streets, which is a uh, kind of the little brother of the trio and uh, it's by Flaminia Brasini uh, which is a friend of a friend so I basically pledged it because of that but uh, she was in the design team for Lorenzo il Magnifico which is one of the games I loved from from actually the early 2000s so that's it it was 24 euros I just pledged it uh, Material for the podcast, I guess. We are paying for everything. Please send us free games. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> if you're a publisher, yeah, we, we will play anything, really. I mean, actually, you know, if someone sends us a free game, we will play <laughs> yeah. it, we will talk about it, and we will likely praise it a lot, so you send us more free games. Oh. No. <laughs> are, are, are we that correct? I will. Send it to me. I will praise okay. it. Cara, you are you correct. Were, you, you, Cara, you are unable to play a game. To play a game. So, <laughs> anyway, no, no, no. We, we will uh, judge your game fairly according to our testes. But uh, this, this is what we say in public, at least. Yeah. I mean, in fact, you know, as a teacher, uh, I can yeah. say, you know, um, having affection for someone increases the chance of being more critical to offset the affection, which happens with teachers. So, you know, befriending a teacher is not a good idea. If a teacher yeah. notices they like you more, they try to be specifically critical so they aren't, you know, um, <laughs> accused of being, um, um, of playing uh, favorites or anything. So, yeah. Mm. So, so do you think that any of your students are listening to this podcast? No. <laughs> oh, I can help. So, fuck, shit, fuck, fuck. Uh. <laughs> okay, this should keep uh, children away. No, 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 that, 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 that should keep the students out. Uh. Okay, Alexis, please beep me. <laughs> okay, that's settled. We can move on. Yes, we should. So, <laughs> um, after we uh, talked about, you know, what we backed... Um, or not. quick look into, or, or not, quick look into the future. How do you feel going into crowdfunding projects in the future? Is there something you say, oh yeah, that I definitely want to back. Uh, have you reservations? Do you have reservations regarding crowdfunding for the future? How do you feel about it? Are we still talking about make? Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> if you want. <laughs> no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm messing around. Uh, here, honestly, it's going probably to be one or two projects a year, I think. Um, but I'm definitely going to be a bit more. I'm not. I'm not going to say critical, but um, like considering paying attention. Uh, to stuff like yeah, the, the company, uh, maybe trying to support more indie stuff like I did with the Dodge in Paint Forge with a few euros. By the way, Alessio, I'm surprised you don't know them because they're Italian uh, and you seem to know all the <laughs> Italian people in the business. Um, <laughs> so, no, I know that, that always the same two people. We, ah, we okay. again, hello, Dario. Yeah, okay. <laughs> hello. They just create different accounts online. So, yeah, pr probably yeah, more, <laughs> more, more smaller stuff like that. Uh, unless, unless, yeah, years pass and I become crazy and I have tons of money and there is a new <laughs> Kingdom Death Kickstarter for 5,000 euros and now, anyway, they hunt the take care of the 80s for the Kickstarter stuff. <laughs> yeah, we, but we will see because by then I may have uh, been killed 
uh, by all the amount of resin and plastic that I actually have in all my boards. Uh, it's hidden. If it's hidden, it doesn't exist, right? Um, yes. Yeah. Th th totally. th th thank you very much. I was a bit afraid for a minute. Um, so yeah, <laughs> if I have not been crushed by all that weight, and I'm talking like um, like um, ah, metaphoric weight uh, on my shoulders. Mm -hmm. Uh, even if I can't see it, um, yeah, it still does exist, sadly. Um, so yeah, if I have not been crushed uh, by then, by that, maybe I will. Maybe I don't. I don't know yet. But yeah, that's probably going to be not a lot uh, 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 as well because yeah, you know, house repairs and roof of a building and redoing all the bathroom. Um, yeah. That's going to take priority, and that's a deserved priority. <laughs> and I just okay. realized and how the, many yeah. board games I could have bought instead of my house. Oh, Damn! Yeah, yeah, like five or six. <laughs> a ton, I think. Uh, and you, Alessio, what's <laughs> on your mind? Oh, actually, uh, I think uh, I will mainly stay away from Kickstarter, and that that's uh, my opinion is actually and that's become mostly be because of companies like uh, call me or not actually but who could have guessed change it over over time yeah the, the mismanaged projects basically something like that uh, I, at some points uh, at some points uh, over time i thought i was basically uh, pledging to pay for to get updates and eventually i will get if i just stay there long enough i got the game for free but that's basically how i saw crowdfunding at some point but no i i actually think that i will try to get retail as much stuff as possible and since i usually detour from my from my good uh, intentions good, good proposals basically uh, i will end up baking a couple of projects or so uh, basically i would really like to use crowdfunding as a means to to promote stuff which won't get promoted anyway but that's it uh, the last games i bought were basically uh, the, the last games i bought from retail were basically uh, just small card games, dual games, and stuff like that. I have stuff for months for about this, so uh, we'll probably talk about it. And that's it. That's me, at least. And uh, Cara, do you want to put your two cents? Or <laughs> if this was the Kickstarter episode. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, I totally agree with, with Orve also. I have started being way more critical, way more selective uh, with games I back. Um, in fact, um, I am in this board uh, or, or Kickstarter board game Discord server, and uh, whenever a new channel is created, I basically just do a quick glance, and if it doesn't immediately catch me, I mute the channel. And um, because I, I have enough games you know, one could say. And I do have a lot of open projects. Um, I currently, I'm at 37, no, 39 open projects. And um, <clears throat> my, my, my plan until like, like January is to, to get it down to 32 or lower, uh, which should work out with, with planned fulfillments uh, in the next month. Um, and yeah, I mean, retail, as it turns out, as I already mentioned, you know, Kickstarter, it isn't anymore at this point where you can say, Hey, I'm getting the game cheaper. Um, I really hate all the FOMO around it. Um, I have avoided Kickstarter projects simply because of the FOMO. Yeah, when I noticed, oh, this looks fun, and then one scratch, scratch go after another, and hey, look, a new add-on, and another thing, and all Kickstarter exclusive, and I'm like, I don't want that. Um, <clears throat> and um, I'm not as good as limiting <laughs> the projects as I would like to be. Um, I mean, when Aubrey said that the last big project was... Uh, 
Beyond Trespass with Sins of Heracles. Um, and, and I went all in, like big, big all in. I mean, yeah, yeah then I, uh, when I me checked, too. and since then I had nine crowdfunding projects, at least nine that are still open. I think one fulfilled actually in the time. Because what I'm looking more into are actually like comics or pins, you know, stuff like that, which are also indie creators, you know, someone does a web comic and then says, hey, now I want to print this comic. So I'm doing a crowdfunding run um, and maybe 200 people back it and they do a print run for this comic. And it takes not a lot of time. And that's really something I appreciate. Um, so, yeah. Um, I mean, there are things I will back, like when King Raccoon Games um, does a new Kickstarter for a new Tsukuyumi expansion or something like that. Yes, I will jump in on that. When Red Raven Games does a new crowdfunding project, I'll jump in on that. But um, outside of these, um, you know, known creators for me, oh, I really want to, to cut down and support local retail stores. Absolutely, and uh, I think now it's a good time to remember to remind you that there are two games we should talk about. <laughs> yes, there was something else to talk about. So yes. let's jump into that. And the first one um, asks us to hunt shadows. And Im initially, I thought this is a great joke because I don't know what this game is about, but I actually think you are hunting shadows, right? Not really. I wa it's not me. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> you were asking me. No, not true. <laughs> wait, what? Wait, wait what? Sketch. Oh, no, best best introduction ever. Yeah. Oh yeah, we are talking about the board game Shadow Hunters, which is a hidden rule, uh, somewhat little party game. Um, which is a survival board game where e each character is dealt a uh, each player sorry is dealt a character card because no character is dealt a player card. I mean that doesn't work that way. Uh, and uh, these cards will be of different characters. As I said, there are three types: there are the shadows, there are the hunters, and the neutrals ones. They all have a color like the shadows. Uh, they are they are red. The hunters are blue, and the civilians they are yellow. Uh, and the thing is that the hunters and the shadows they are fighting against each other mostly, and the neutrals, I'm going to keep swapping out the them for civilians uh, once in a while, are mostly just trying to get by. Um, so in, in the shadow group you will find the werewolf, uh, you will find uh, yeah, this kind of uh, characters, vampire, uh, thing like that, and in the hunters you will find like... Uh, priests, a hunter, uh, yeah. There is also like a Frankenstein monster, each character in the shadows, uh, etc. So yeah, each uh, player gets dealt a uh, character card and it's kept hidden. You just know who you are, you can check who you are at any time if you forget something. And in between the players there is a big not, not a big, actually, it's a small-ish board where there are two things, mostly. The first one is a damage track. Basically, it's like a kind of serpentine uh, track where there are squ square-ish um, marks with numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc, etc, and it goes up to 14. And on each, on some of them, like from 8, then it's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, there is like an initial of one character. For instance, on the 8, there is the yellow A. On 10, there is the yellow B, and the blue, I think it's E. Or F. One of these two. And these basically damage tracks are telling that the, A, the health points of each character. If your character reaches their initial in the damage track, you are dead. Of course, you can always at some point reveal who you are and you get a special power that you can use. You can use this power only if you are revealed. So basically, you, you can try to reveal yourself before you die because if you die and haven't used your power, that's a little bit sad. Yeah. <laughs> then there are six cards of locations 
and each turn you will use dice uh, to decide which location your character will move to. So you have two dice uh, and the numbers of a location are from 2 to 10. Uh, some of them have two numbers which makes out like uh, nine values in six cards. Um, <laughs> And uh, you will move to one uh, location and uh, use the power of this uh, location. That's very simple. Uh, these locations will allow you to draw cards. There are three types of cards, white, black and green. These cards are basically made to either try to guess uh, the affiliation, let's say, of one other player or try to actually attack them. Some of them will be items that will let you deal more damage, for instance, when you fight. That will extend your range because you can only fight the characters on the cards where you are. The cards are, let's say, grouped by two. So you can only fight the character of your card and all the nearby one. Unless you have a gun that says you cannot attack melee range, but that's another matter. And yeah, bas basically play the players are going to take turns like this, moving from a location card to another location card and trying to just guess who is their friend, who is not their friend, who is Daniel, and who they should try to kill because uh, all the characters, they have a victory uh, condition. So the... And... These victory conditions generally are for the shadows to have the hunters dead, for the hunters to have the shadows dead, and for the neutral people, it's a little bit different. They all have very different stuff. Like, uh, I'm trying to find, uh, here I have the uh, winning conditions of the new characters, where are the ones from the older characters? I, yeah. I only can have old new characters in the old look which is a little bit annoying uh but yeah there is like a character which is daniel uh in the uh, neutral ones basically his goal he is is to die first or to be alive at the end uh but, but to die first is much more fun because you can try start attacking the others to make them think that you actually are the werewolf to hope that the hunters will all attack you and then they kill you and you are like ah I'm, I'm Daniel and I won bitches and yeah <laughs> that actually works um, there are kind of a few other things like that um, some characters that can heal themselves, uh, some characters that have like extra attacks, uh, things like that. And basically, yeah, it, it's a game that goes quite fast. Well, it's not the very first time you play it because as always, it's always longer the very first time because you have to understand the game and see how you can trick guess in the others and stuff like that. And when you start seeing someone that has taken 13 HP, um, 13 damage, and there are only two characters that are left uh, at the 14 uh, HP mark. You're like, oh, 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 either it's the werewolf and it's going to be very dangerous <laughs> for me, or either they are jo George, I think it's George, the G, uh, basic character. And yeah, I'm in their camp, so it's going to be okay for me. But ooh, if it's the werewolf, ah! So there, there are always quite a few funny moments with this game, like, yeah, uh, definitely a few gotcha. And overall, it's not a very complicated game. Uh, it's a game that is very cool f to introduce teenagers uh, to Hidden Rolls game. Um, because, yeah, it's, it's simple enough and there are not too many components and not too many, let's say, braining options to confuse the, the other players. Um, and it's not a very expensive game, to be honest. Um, it's something like 25, 30 euros. I haven't really kept track of pricing evolutions on this game, but that's not too much of a problem. And there is a very good thing with this game. It's that it does have, like so many games, of course, an expansion. Or maybe even yeah. two. Ah, yes. Yeah, of course, everyone loves an expansion. But for this specific one, the expansions, they are actually only a bunch of cards. It's, re it's really just like you open uh, like, like a magic 
blister of cards. And yeah, that's it. You have all the things that you actually needed for the expansion. And the expansion is just a set of new characters. So you have something like 10, 9, maybe, characters in the game, in the basic game box, but you get the same amount there. And of course, since you have the initial of the character in the uh, damage track, they will have the same HP with the same letter. Like, for instance, if it was uh, Ali uh, that has, um, where is the A, uh, 8 uh, HP, it's going to be Alice in the expansion, and it all revolves around that. And of course, the <laughs> character which has the A and he's a neutral is still a character with an A and still a neutral in the in the expansion. So the things they add up at the end, and it, the characters are a little bit different because they don't exactly have the same power and things like that, but they are still very similar. So I'm going to say that the expansions. Or maybe just the expansion, I don't remember if there are one or two. Uh, on top of being cheap, don't really bring that much to the game, to be honest. Uh, it, it's not that big of a change, it's not something that you absolutely must have, but at the same time, if you like the game, if you want the expansion, you can easily store it in your game box. Because, I mean, it's just a set of 8 more cards, so, or 10, who cares, that doesn't change much the space that it takes. Um, and so, yeah, it's it's very easy to, to, to get, it's very easy to store, it's very easy to play. Uh, there is just one thing to know, it's that I think it is not recommended to mix uh, the two expansion, well, the basic game and one expansion together. I think it's recommended to like just keep um, one set together, because the things are meant to synergize a bit and be fun, like that. Um, yeah, and honestly, that's most of Shadowhunters, but what, what we could go over, it's actually victory conditions, uh, because that's what's going to be a bit more, I would say, the the important set. Yeah, I, I have it here. Like, um, oh, that's not the victory conditions, that's the, the power. Yeah, healing, uh, dealing damage, and then getting uh, an equipment. Uh, attacking more, uh, moving. Some some characters they have things to move, like choosing more where they want to to go, um, give damage with a dice, uh, things like that. You know, the the, the combat seems really uh, articulated, interesting. It's it, I mean it, it's somewhat simple to be honest, uh, but I like the fact that there is the range. Uh, yeah. Because that's where actually the characters who can do more specific stuff for movement, uh, they get to shine there. And, and I think that's, that's very fun. But yeah, I, I do have here uh, a few of the victory conditions. And yeah, for the hunters, basically it's all the shadows are dead. Uh, for most shadows, it's all the hunters or three neutrals are dead. Um, uh, Daniel, yeah, either the first one to die or one of the last players alive. Bob uh, needs to have just equipped cards, and Bob can steal uh, equipped cards <laughs> to other players. <laughs> um, yeah, that's 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 a fun one to be honest. Bob is a is a fun one, but uh, <laughs> there is also a thing is that Bob, so the equipment thief, um, only can be in a game if you have um, more than a certain amount of players, which I do not remember. Um, but yeah, the amount, it's, it's like for the ones that have played Bang, it's the same as Bang, the amount of each uh, type of characters uh, that you get in a game depends on the, num of the, to on the total number of players. Okay, well, I was thinking about Bang actually, but the fact about range is actually very interesting because you have it in roles, so people backing away is not just to put range, uh, they, they could be just genuinely tra trying to put distance, so yes. interesting, yeah. Yes. So yeah, that... I, I can see the Japanese touch here, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that is Shadowhunter, not a very complicated uh, game. 
But um, still, yeah, as, as I said, a good one to introduce um, more teenager players to the hidden role uh, mechanic and to the guessing who is who based on what they are doing, on who is not who based on what they are doing, and and things like that. Yeah, it sounds really That's interesting. Hmm. Oh, if only we had time. <laughs> Okay, thank you for uh, bringing my attention to this uh, game, which I will think about buying. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, um, uh, it's a game that I recommend playing if you have a little bit bigger, let's say, uh, group. Uh, it's not a game that I recommend uh, to play if you are, let's say, three or four. Uh, it's, for, it's four to eight, actually, but I think it starts shining at six and, and over six. Okay, maybe yeah, I won't cool. buy the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's a thing to take into account for these more party slash group games. Okay, so um, then after we uh, hunted some shadows or were hunted by shadows, um, let's do some combos. Yeah, <laughs> let's do some combos. <laughs> I'm great about... with these segways, am I? Yeah, yeah. The, the best transitions ever. I mean, uh, fan, uh, fans it... should be uh, completely afraid to have their place taken. <laughs> Ma master teach me, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, actually, I think we, we, we just banned from making episodes together. No, yeah. Not just the three of us, <laughs> no, not anymore. <laughs> this is the last time, guys. So... <laughs> Let's I mean, talk about I'm, Combo I'm, Fighter. I'm, I'm just cracking up because I'm exhausted by work and I'm, I'm completely yeah. happy. Because tomorrow is a Saturday and I still have to go in to teach some people to do some stuff because no one else apparently can teach them. And yeah, I'm, I'm cracking up. <laughs> yeah. Come on, come on, it's funnier this way. I promise I'll be short, so uh, let's see if I can keep this promise this time. Combo Fighter, uh, it's actually a 2019 game, but it's it has been... Uh, uh, it has been a lot of copyright issues uh, from uh, intellectual I mean... property and stuff. <laughs> so, yeah. Do come you on, want to say talk it. about how old Shadow Hunters is? <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, no, no. Th that's uh, there's now a, pl a plot maker edition which debuted the Descent this year. So I'm talking about this, about the pack one, which is already available. But I think uh, in kind of next week there will be pack 2 and pack 3 so everything uh, will come together who played the deaths and uh, managed to play and buy all three of the boxes i have all of them we will focus on pack 1 what is combo fighter combo fighter is a kind of street fighter meets tekken actually the video games but played with a deck of cards you have a fighter these fighters have basically a profile which is a deck of cards which is made out of cards which are attack red, defense yellow and footwork blue. They resolve like uh, red beats yellow, yellow beats blue, blue beats red. So it's like rock, paper, scissors. And that's the basic of the game. You pick end of five cards and you have a deck at your side, and you play against your opponent, which does the same. You have a single asymmetric power, which does wonders, because it's beautifully designed. It's basically a small uh, tile you flip, and uh, in a state it does something, in the other state it does something else. For instance, for the fighter with a club, uh, she's fighting uh, with a club until you break it because you basically break it on the back on your opponent. After that, you don't have the club anymore. So you don't have initiative, you don't have more damage and stuff like that. So you have to be careful. Uh, there is the pugilist, the boxer, who uh, plays uh, on a side until it's winning and then she loses momentum when she loses fight and gets on side B and something like that. The core of the game is playing rounds. How do you play a round? You draw five cards, the opponent draws five cards. From these five cards you pick one and play it blind. When both players have played the cards face down, you flip the cards and you see one in a rock paper scissors situation. If 
someone won, they can now pull a combo. The card has an indication of the uh, other cards you can play. They are like... Uh, 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 the cards have a symbol and a color. So a square blue could be followed, for instance, from a uh, by a circle yellow, and then from a triangle red, and so on, until you basically exhaust the combo. Uh, you can play all the cards you want, and some of these cards played in a specific order make a special move. So Hadoken, you basically <laughs> do extra damage, and that's it. The beautiful thing about the cards is that if you see what you are playing, they are actually actual movements in that fighting style. The uh, two creators of the game, which are Snorri and Asger, uh, decided to uh, research pretty closely the fighting styles they wanted to implement, and they are beautiful. On pack 2, I think there is a fighter, there is a boxer like Muhammad Ali, uh, so float like a butterfly, sting like a bee or something like that. It's beautiful how it is faithful to reality. So, uh, that's, th that's it. Uh, how do you win? Basically, when you cause, uh, when you play these combos, you uh, cause an amount of damage, and this, uh, this is the number of cards the opponent must discard, either from the end or from the deck. Uh, when the opponent uh, finishes their card on the deck, they are staggering, meaning that they reshuffle the deck, but now, next time they take even one damage, they lose. And that's it, combo fighter. Was I short? Yes, you were. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> now, uh, a couple of things. This game is a beautiful filler, gets resolved in 5 minutes or 10 minutes if you have a severe AP. Uh, analysis, pa analysis paralysis, I mean, and it is really like playing around that. Uh, I think it remembers more Tekken than Street Fighter, but then you have spe special moves. I mean, so, you, you yeah. lost me at Tekken and Street Fighter because I don't yeah. I don't know the difference between the two games, so... <laughs> yeah, if you are old like me, basically, you will remember the, the, there were these places called Arcade, where you went there and uh, you have these tiny things of metal which were kind of coins, but not real coins. Because I mean, they... I, I know what an arcade <laughs> is, but I don't know the difference between these two fighting games. I'm not that young. Isn't, then, isn't Street Fighter basically more realistic? I mean, I remember in Tekken there were like robots and, and demons no. and whatnot as characters. In Street Fighter, you there's a token. You launch the ball of fires. So no, absolutely no. <laughs> <laughs> I but didn't say completely. I just said more realistic. Less no, not realistic. No, not at all. <laughs> no. Uh, okay. But this game is beautiful. Actually, uh, there is. Uh, they call it the Yomi, right? When you try to guess what your opponent will do, since the uh, it's the stats of the player you are. Of the character you are playing are actually played on printed on your character card so the opponent will know if you have for instance a lot of red cards or a few yellows or something like that also they know that you probably have this asymmetric condition that uh, most of the time when you flip it uh, gives you an advantage or a disadvantage so since they know the condition you pro there is a, for instance, the, the the Ukrainian fighter is like Zangief from Street Fighter, so nobody knows it, of course. But uh, is Zangief is basically a big fighter who, when you sacrifice four defense cards, he gets powered up. So you basically know that the fighter who has a fair amount, but not a lot, of these cards, he will try to play them as much as possible. And you can take advantage of, of this. So you basically try to do quick jabs to that opponent uh, because you will try to guess, but that opponent will try to surprise you in a way. The game can be very fun. It's very interesting and it's easy to... It's actually the, the, the game we like. The games we like. It's easy to learn, hard to master. Uh, it's 
it's very easy and you can always say well it was like rock paper scissors of course you were lucky <laughs> but <laughs> yeah the, the good player the, the good player shows li like this so this is it uh, since it's a 20 year game and uh, uh, okay i i'm not actually uh, doing propaganda for the european union uh, law to anyone uh, listening to us from Africa or something like that, <laughs> US of course, uh, but this game is produced uh, in, uh, in the European Union, it's, uh, I think it's from Denmark, the studio, the clockmaker studio, uh, you can get it fairly quickly and it's distributed worldwide, so basically everywhere, you can have it for 20 euros, 20 dollars or something like that, uh, just go on, give it a try, it's if you do five games so five or six game of it you can just resell it if you don't like it so a cool recommendation for a cool filler also because when you do a game you will do another and another especially if you lose <laughs> again yeah <laughs> yeah of course no <laughs> another one and that's it that sounds so all right. Now, now it's about the time when Kara should uh, just close. I know how to, to host. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Anyone want to add something to Combo Fighter? Combo! No? Okay. Then uh, I just looked at the time, and I guess that's all the time we have for this episode. You can catch us over at www.patreon.com slash thelastnd or at I don't think we have Twitter anymore. Um, no, we have it. We just don't post. So you can, you know, watch this, There's listen no to this podcast anymore. Listen to this podcast at whatever Hello. you're listening to it right now. We still um, have a so Discord, and we sometimes chat in the Discord. We yes, yes, chat join alone. our Discord at you know Discord. And um, so until next time, we have been Blast and D. So goodbye from Alessio. Hello. No, I won't cooperate. Close enough. Audrey. Yeah. <laughs> Au revoir, les amis. And myself. And remember that the second E in Stand D is for chaos. Fuck shit. Fuck, fuck.